Welcome back to the channel everyone. If you're new here, glad that uh, we've got you and I hope you enjoy this content. Today we are going to be looking at the Ascend 133X Tournament Fishing Kayak. Comes with a motor guide XI3 GPS trolling motor. Comes with the Garmin Striker 4 Fish Finder, a 240 centimeter Ascend paddle. Uh, and a rod holder. And I think that's it that comes with it. However, as you can see right here behind me, I've got quite a few things that we're going to be putting into or on the kayak in a series of videos, probably five or six videos, uh, until we get this thing completed. And then once that's finished, we'll take it out, maiden it, hopefully catch a couple fish. So with that said, I wanted to first take you over the kayak itself some initial thoughts that I have. There are a couple things that I'm not too thrilled about, but overall, I think so far, it appears to be a really solid piece and at the price point, it's hard to beat. So let's get right into it. Uh, we have the chair here and it comes laying down flat like this and it's got some cord over it, securing it and holding it down. And then below the chair is a drawer when you receive this inside of that drawer is going to be this box and this will be attached to the chair itself these are the hardware that allows you to attach the chair to the chair base below however we're going to be doing something slightly different we'll get to that in just a moment here comes with the owner's manual this is actually down here in this hatch so we'll get to that in a second as well all right so let's talk about what comes in the box really quick here all right, we have all of these plugs. Let's see here. There are nine of these plugs right here. Get those out of the way. We've got some rope. This is what was securing the chair and holding it down. Uh, we've got a rigging set with some more rope and some guides. Uh, yet another rigging set here. And this has another rigging set with two handles. So this is going to be for retracting and deploying the trolling motor without having to get all the way up to the front and doing it that way. Uh, there's a few couple loose guides that are in there. We've got the Yak Power accessory, looks like an extension cable here. We have a, another little extension. Uh, right here, we have, this is what's going to connect in the front of the boat where the trolling motor goes, and you would connect this to your trolling motor, negative and positive, and that's how you would get power there. This piece right here connects right here in the hull and has a 50 amp inline fuse. So um, this is what's going to go from your battery or battery box to here and then all the way up to the front to power the trolling motor. That's it. That's all that comes with it. Again, it has the owner's manual in multiple languages. Uh, right. So let's go ahead and get this stuff put away real quick. And then I want to show you guys a couple of the things that I'm not too happy about. Uh, I feel it's not a manufacturing defect, I don't think. Rather, um, it's how the hull was handled at Bass Pro, Cabela's, whichever of the two, they're the same thing, but whichever one you happen to get yours at, if you do get an Ascend Kayak, hopefully they treat it better than they did mine. So, uh, let's go ahead and slide this out for a second. Ooh, it's kind of tight. There we go. 
that in there. Okay, that hardware in there and this. All right, checking this out. So the first thing is right back here, there is a little bit of a bend or an indentation in the HDPE. If you can see it here, it's quite flexible as well, but it does come down and it's not the end of the world, but I don't think it's supposed to be that way. And then more so when you get here to where the battery box goes, it's actually kind of curved up like this. So it kind of curves up and then the back piece goes down, whatever. So water will certainly pool here and likely not be able to make its way up to the drain holes. So that's kind of frustrating, but it is what it is, small thing. Uh, okay, starting back here, we have a hatch. We have the 12 volt accessory. We have two rails. You've got two handles, which are molded into the HDPE. You've got two flush mount rod holders right here and right here. Again, you have where your battery box or battery will go right here, along with two drain holes next to it. And you have the uh, power where you would go ahead and connect the battery to feed power into the system. Okay, moving up, we have the chair. I'm gonna move this out of the way for just a second here. And then you have the base of the chair. Let's go ahead and get the drawer out of the way. As you guys probably have seen in other videos, this base has two positions. It has the upper position, which is this right here. And then it has the lower position, which actually significantly lowers it. If I can get it into there, there we go. And that's the lower position. That's a snug fit, which I suppose isn't a bad thing. Okay, just below the seat is another access port, two more drain holes, and again, obviously, the drawer. Uh, we have a cup holder here and here. We have some storage here. This is where uh, you could put some stuff or your rods would go, your reels would end up coming right down in here and you could store a couple rods along the side. All right, as we've come up to here, here's my next pet peeve. So there was something heavy that was set on this for clearly some time because it's dented in the pads, but more so it's actually created another slight indentation here in the hull. It doesn't appear that there's any type of compromise or anything like that. It has the dent. Again, I know it's no big deal, whatever. Moving on, we have two mounted grab handles. You could uh, help carry it perhaps with these. Coming up, we have our Yak Power Control Center, I suppose you would say, where you can turn power on to the system, and then you can choose which items actually have power at that time. Just forward of the Yak Power, we have what they're calling the dry box, dry hatch, or just an easy access hatch. This is supposed to be dry. It does give you access to the hull down in here, and there is some foam obviously to help with the rigidity and in the event that the hull took on water the foam would keep the kayak itself afloat and you wouldn't you know be in a whole world of trouble in here we have another plug to where you could put another uh, 12 volt battery for all of your accessories if you don't want to run it off the single one one thing about this there is a small rubber gasket that goes around however this box doesn't close very snugly. So I would be very skeptical if it is indeed actually uh, waterproof or if it's water resistant or whatever. Um, okay, right above that, we have the footrests. These can be adjusted by simply depressing the red piece and then sliding it forward to whatever position you want. It locks back in place, you let go and you're good to go there. Just forward of that, we have two more drain holes and we have a third drain hole right up front here. Another access port for the wiring and whatever else you wanna do. Up here is the port for the trolling motor power. I can't seem to get it open right now. There we go. And then on this side, a 12 volt accessory port. Right here, we have a little bit more of the padding. And this is where the trolling motor itself will mount. Uh, two more handles molded into it. The kayak itself has a catamaran style hull, so it should be very stable. I have not been on one of these kayaks, so I can't say for certain how it performs. However, I've watched many of the YouTube videos that are already out there, as I'm sure you guys have as well, and it looks like it performs very, very nicely. All right, let's get to this stuff. First thing we'll start with, since this 
chair is in the way is what we're going to do here. Uh, I did not come up with this idea. Other people have already done it. And so I just borrowed from their idea. Hey, it's a great idea. Uh, and that is I'm going to be using a bar stool rotating plate uh, to attach to the frame here and then attach the seat to the other side of it so that when I'm in the kayak, if I needed to get something from the back, I can actually pivot. Even if it's not fully around, I can turn the seat just enough. It'll be easier, nicer, it should anyways. Uh, and that piece is actually right here. This is the bar stool rotating mount. It's got anchor points right here. So we'll go ahead and set that back aside. And with that, I can get the chair out of the way. Okay, since I've got these in my hand already, again, another idea that is not mine. I uh, will link to the Thingiverse files here as well as who it was that designed these down in the description. But what these are here, I'm going to put, uh, they're essentially little guides that I will put here and here for the Railblazer C-Tug kit, which is down here. We'll get to that in a minute. But what the person who designed these said was when they had their sea tug underneath um, if it got bumped by something or stuck on something the straps would actually slide back and eventually the sea tug itself would come off the back of the kayak well with these sorry with these it prevents that from being able to slide anywhere because it does go actually through here so you would feed the strap through strap through cinch it down it's done uh, these can just be mounted with a couple self-tapping screws a little silicone if you want to make sure i still got to take the supports out of this one but that is that this is printed in matter hackers nylon g all right get that out of the way okay we have the motor guide xi3 actually down underneath the hull right here We'll do a whole video dedicated to just the trolling motor where we unbox it. We give our impressions of it. There's probably nothing that I can tell you that hasn't already been said before, but we'll check it out. Uh, for the motor guide, I do have the Katana two blade prop. It comes with a three blade on there right now. And then I have an eliminator supposed to eliminate vibrations, uh, any cavitation, things like that. Uh, this is going to replace the plastic prop nut that comes with it. I also have the prop wrench kit over here. I have a red TPU 3D printed part. I'm gonna put an air tag in here and then I'm gonna insert that somewhere within the hull. Here we have the all top four x four accessory battery box. This has easy access terminals right here and here for the positive and negative. It also has a USB, two USB ports actually. It has a a uh, voltmeter right up here on top. However, we have a much better one. And then it has a cigarette lighter adapter here, as well as I believe this is all set up on a 15 or 20 amp uh, fuse inside here. Uh, whereas these two Anderson connectors are running off of a single 60 amp fuse with inside. So this is where we're going to power our trolling motor off of. I have additional Anderson connectors here some 10 gauge wire right here and the crimps for it or the terminals rather right here. I have a Ram mount quad lock system. This is going to be for the phone. And then we also have a bunch of the Ram mounts right over here. We have one for the Garmin inReach mini. We have another one for a GoPro. We have another GoPro. Uh, I have, I will have the Hero 10 with the max lens mod on the chest in case I wanted to you know, get some really good footage that is stabilized incredible. And then last, but most certainly not least, we will have the Insta360-1R on the Railblazer boom back here. That way, well, <laughs> perhaps this way. Uh, that way if I get something this will be extended enough to have a full 360 degree view of everything happening. So that'll be kind of neat. Okay. So here we have the Yak Attack Mighty Mount and the Yak Attack Gear Tracks. Now these orange gear tracks are going to go right here on either side, which will bring some rails closer to the chair. Of course it fell in. Uh, the mighty mounts are going to go way up here at the front, which will then, which will then allow uh, 
to mount things closer up here. All right, coming back around. Should just leave these in here. Everything we've talked about is going in the kayak. All right, and then back here, we are going to have the wilderness systems box. There are four pole holders in here and that will just set, well, it'll set a little more like that. And this will actually be flipped around the opposite direction like so. There we go. That's pretty much what that's gonna look like right there. This will be anchored down. I'll have some rail mounts to really secure this in there, though I don't think it really has to be. The only reason you'd wanna do that is if you happen to capsize, but you've got much bigger problems if that happens. Uh, okay, for the life vest, personal flotation device, whatever, I went ahead and went with the Onyx. Uh, not only does it have a very attractive price, but it's, it's made well, it's lightweight, and it fits extremely well. That's another thing I really wanna emphasize here. A lot of people in the comments on Amazon for this particular vest were saying how uh, the sizing chart wasn't right. Not true. I measured my chest. I went with the size that it said it fits like a glove, fits perfect. So we'll get that out of the way here. Okay, we have our 240 centimeter or this snaps together, comes with the package. We have the Yak Attack Omega rod holder. This comes with the package as well. I ordered a second one that should be here soon. We have the Railblazer camera boom and the connector for that. Okay, for the battery, here we go. We have the Battleborn 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. We have a fuse distribution blocks for that. Okay, coming back over here for the battery, we have the Victron Bluetooth battery monitor system. Essentially what this is, is this is a, a shunt which is going to go in line and then it connects to the display, which I will mount up there somewhere by the Yak Power uh, panel likely. And then I'll be able to connect to my phone to see exactly what I've got left in the battery at all times. Okay, again, we have a Victron 15 amp 12 volt charger. This is gonna be for the battery. It did not come with it. I will link to everything in this video down in the description. And like I said at the beginning here, there will be a series of videos, probably five or six, where we install all of this. And I, again, go over every single last detail, what we're doing to get it set up and ready to hit the water. We have the Garmin Striker Plus 4 Plus Transducer. That's a mouthful. Striker Plus 4 Plus Transducer. Fish finder comes with the package as well. Uh, okay, we have a little Boomerang Company lanyard. These are really nice. Uh, I actually used to use this for my e-skate puck. I would just put it on my backpack or whatever. And in the event that uh, I dropped my puck or whatever, I wouldn't actually drop it. But this will work great for some pliers or whatever else. Probably gonna get a few more of these. Uh, just a little red flag here to attach to the back for when I am towing this thing. Uh, in the bed of my truck, which I will be doing most of the time. And if I get to the point where I don't like how that's working, I may consider getting a jet ski trailer. But as of now, we're going with the uh, truck route and I do have the T-bone um, hitch adapter to give it some support. I'll show you guys that later. Okay, on to the motor mount bracket. So the Kit comes with this motor guide nylon bracket. However, there have been some people that say that the fit and finish of this just isn't that great. I haven't checked it out myself. However, uh, given the fact that this is indeed an investment and I wanted to have it last and kind of just right out the gate, buy once, cry once, have the best stuff, I went with the upgraded aluminum XI3 or XI5 mount which will go on the front. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one yet. Maybe I'll see if I can return it. And then last, nope, sorry, two things. We have our little net, which can collapse. Nothing special there, just a net. And then we have the Railblazer Sea Tug kit, which, well, you all know what that is. It's just a trolley for dragging or towing the kayak itself. Um, the kayak, however, speaking of dragging, it does have two 
what they call sacrificial drag plates or sacrificial skid plates rather uh, two on the back and one on the front i'm not joking about the sacrificial part it actually says that in the manual um, but that's it guys that is what we are going to be putting in or on the ascend 133x tournament kayak I hope that this was a exciting and informative video for you guys. And I really hope that I will see you in the coming videos when we start to assemble this thing. And then when we actually get it out on the water, it's gonna be a really exciting series. I hope to see you there. If you're not already subbed to the channel, that would be great if you wanna see more videos like this. And if you wanna have conversation down in the comments, I encourage that. I most certainly would love to hear about how you outfit your kayak. And if there's anything that you see here that can be done differently, better, or perhaps shouldn't be done the way that I've proposed it and the way I'm thinking about it, let me know down in the comments. Until then, see you guys later. Have a great day.